So this is part five of your tutorial and you're gonna need that chipboard spine, a needle that is uh, wide enough for the threading of your twine, your awl, your Fabri-Tac glue, and take out this portion of your fabric with the markings facing you. Set that aside, grab your Fabri-Tac, and you're going to start Applying your fabric tack and going around the circles. Try not to get into the circles or the holes that you punctured. Avoid those areas as best as you can, but you want to make sure you cover your chipboard as best as you can, leaving out the holes that you pierce. Place it in between the two markings that you made. Press down firmly. If you have a brayer, go ahead and use that and give it a good burnish. You're going to need your crocodile so you can punch or punch out the little hole that's on the top. You want to set it at the 3 16th hole punching. And here's one thing that um, you should do is take your little awl and then each little hole that's in your chipboard spine, pierce through it so that way you have a good marking. So grab your off first before you start attaching your pages and pierce through those holes. Now here I'm just taking the twine and of course I had a little mess there. I had to untangle. <laughs> and just as an FYI, I am so horrible. I have no patience to untangle red strings, laces, and I just give up. Eric normally does that for me. Luckily, this was not as bad as other things that I've done in the past. So you're gonna thread your needle. And for some point, some reason today, my arthritis was kicking in, so I was having a hard time gripping things. Okay, you don't wanna tie an end, you just want to leave it just as is and open. Make sure that you have all your page, pages are facing in the right direction. So double check that, that it's important that before you start sewing in your signatures, that every single page is facing the right direction. Okay. And there I am. I'm double checking, triple checking. I am just really making sure that my pages are all facing the upright direction. thumbs up because it was facing the right direction and you know I we're humans I tend to make a mistake every now and then so I have to make sure especially since lately I have been lacking sleep but during the time that I'm not sleeping I'm creating something for you guys so grab your needle and this is where I want you guys to make sure you pierce those holes before you start doing this and you're going to start putting it with the right side facing in 
go in the back in the middle hole, pierce it through. Pull it and you're going to have a little tail. Now Young Sue was kind enough to gift gift me this purple tape. It's almost like a painter's tape, so you can probably use that. I don't know where she got this, but you can hold that. It's a good temporary hold, and it's reusable, as you will see. So I pierce it in the middle, and I'm going to pierce through the middle of my signature all the way through, pulling tightly. Again, double check, make sure you're going in the upright direction and get, then go and pierce it through the top hole. Pull it through and attach it to the top hole of your spine. Making sure you're going all in order, that you're not skipping a hole or going into the wrong row. Once you pull it through, pull it really tightly, make sure it's tight. Again, I was having issues with my arthritis today. And then go back to the middle. this kind of stuff but I managed pull it straight out and then you're gonna go down the bottom hole of your signature and right up to the spine You know what, May? You aren't thinking. You need to pierce those holes so you do not have to do the challenging part of trying to figure out with a touch, touch, feel, feel um, to see where the holes are. That was not working. So we had to pierce through the fabric to get those holes to show up on the other side. So to make it easier for us to be able to pierce through our signatures with the without the difficulties. <clears throat> okay, so now you can see that I can see those little holes or the piercing a lot better than trying to touch and feel to see, oh, where is that hole? <laughs> crazy me. I'm telling you, two scoops of crazy and a scoop of cuckoo-cuchu. So pull it tightly. Go back into that top, or the bottom hole actually, and release your little tail and tie, pull tightly again and tie a knot. And you will see I was a little bit struggling with the tying. You want to make sure that the inside signatures are pulled. Not too tight that you're going to tear into your pages, but tight where you it's not completely loose, okay? And if you have a hard time like I did with this because of my arthritis, you can do one or two things. You can have someone put their finger down and hold down while you tie it, or you can do a crisscross um, with a thread and just kind of tie it that way. Did the crisscross, and you'll see it later on.
Now make sure you save all those little scraps because you're going to be using that um, in your embellishment so for your tags. So just make sure you save all those little, those little scraps. Now remove your clips and what I do is I clip all of it to the back to keep it all in one place and they're not shifting and moving all over the place. So just keep one clip there. I was having issues with gripping one clip and clip it all the way to the fabric. Okay, now you can grab your second signature and do the same thing. Try to get them in order and always make sure that they are going upright and they're in the right direction or in the same direction. Grab another piece of thread. direction start with the middle hole pierce it from the back of the spine pull it through and into the middle hole and you're going to put your little tape there to secure your tail and into the middle hole of your signature top hole of your signature and your spine and pierce through. that middle hole where you started. You're going to go right back to the same hole you started. Make sure everything's pulled tightly. And sometimes you have to kind of move the spine just a little where the signature and the spine is so you can make sure you're aligning or piercing right in to the right place. to that bottom hole so once you've pulled tightly go to that bottom hole pull it all the way through pull it tight make sure it's tight in the inside This is where I'm going to crisscross to the first twine. I'm going to go under and just kind of crisscross it a little because I'm having a hard time gripping. So I don't want to make my pages too loose. So I just wanted to go underneath so that I can crisscross and tighten it up a little bit better. So I'm going to do this for all the signatures and when you have them all done, see I'm saying right there, I am having such horrible pain on my wrist. When they're all attached, then we'll glue this down. So do this for all signatures and we'll continue forward. Again, make sure that you keep your scraps, make a little pile of them.
timeline or make it easier for you and making sure all your signatures are out of your way just take one big binder clip and clip all the signatures together to the back of the fabric that keeps them all together and they're out of your way grab your next signature and continue forward The binder clips that I forgot to take out as I was attaching the signature pages and we've attached all five signatures to the spine of our journal cover or the inside cover at least as you can see there I have done a crisscross stitch because my arthritis was really hurting and that's just crisscrossing your threads through and folding it tightly now grab your little decorative outside fabric and that's going to sit right in the center. Pull in your kit. You have a green seam binding or a sage color seam binding. Go ahead and kind of distress that a little bit if you want. And I don't cut it. I just make um, a little knot and you will see. make a knot on each end and you're going to grab your fabric tack and you're going to glue that in the center of your journal and the center is about three and, and a half I believe or a little bit or maybe three seven eight but you're gonna take your center point and you can fold to find that you can fold your fabric also in half make a little marking and that tells you where your center point is so right there I'm applying it to the center and I am going to glue that down with some fabric tack to secure it in place and I've got about two inches in of that seam binding on each side just because I want to make sure that when you're pulling 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 you know opening and closing pulling on the that seam binding I don't want it to eventually break apart so make sure you have enough of that glued down in the inside okay so that's what I'm doing here so now you want to make sure that your top hole for your embellishment is pierced through so just open it up to where you can see that align it to the spine marking on your cover fabric and grab your little awl and pierce through so just make sure it's perfectly aligned 
when you do this on each side. Now grab your crocodile and pierce through that fabric for the embellishment hole that you're going to pierce out and grab an eyelet. Now that wasn't part of your kit. I'm sure you guys have some eyelets. Just grab an eyelet that's big enough for the hole that you punched out and use your crocodile to attach this. you're going to take your spine and in that little area that you marked on your main fabric you're going to take your fabric tack and glue or apply some fabric tack to the chipboard spine making sure you cover everything but make sure you don't cover your little holes because then you don't want the glue to see through the holes that you pierce so go in and out as a weaving between where the holes are and any of the areas where it's an open area make sure you completely fill that in with your fabric tack. Let's see, I have completely covered it but I made sure that the holes are not saturated with a lot of glue so it doesn't seep through and mess up with my pages. Align it, and I'm standing up to do this. Align it in the middle, and I'm aligning the little, the little punch out holes. Burnish it with your finger, and then you're gonna want to come back with a burnishing tool like a bone folder. Now do this in every little section. As you can see, I'm flipping through to all the little signature sections and just burnishing it with my fingers and I will come back with a bone folder and do the same as well. So now you're going to glue the flaps of the inside cover down to your outside cover and use your fabric tack get those edges and I'm just going right into that stitch line and right where that spine is on the outer edges or the bottom edges I'm going to make sure that that's also has some fabric tack. Make sure your, your um, seam binding is out of the way. You don't glue that down or glue it away or tuck it inside. Grab your brayer and just burnish it in. What you did on one side you're going to do it to the other side and then once you have that glued down you're going to let it sit and you're almost done with this part of the process
almost done again I'm burnishing 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 I can't stress that enough make sure it is perfectly burnished now you have your journal done you're gonna let this dry and you're gonna snip the seam binding straight in the center and just tie a little knot if you want or a little bow whichever you want everything is going in the right direction and yes it seeps a little bit of the um, fabric tack but it's going to be covered with some other laces and embellishments. So there I am tying it, and that's what it should like to look like. It looks great, it looks beautiful. And that's what it looks like. Make sure it completely dry now you see that little piece of fiber that I just pulled out from the fabric save that because we can use that for one of our boho beads that we're going to create for embellishment as well as the twine make sure you save all those little pieces of scraps they come in handy anyway stay tuned to part six